Penada e Closo Penwen. That's the first time I've ever had to stop a train before. So uh, this is going to be a wonderful walk. This is going to be the sea bit. Not a bad spot. Right, let me show you the walk on the map. Right, as I've always said, excuse the shaking, but basically there's Penryn Station. You can walk a bit behind, but there's not a lot there. And what I'd rather do is take it down to Penryn Dudre Station. Wonderful views out across the bay there. Past a lovely church. All right, a bit of road walking. Then we come to Minvid Station. Absolutely lovely, but this is the key bit. I want to get us on to the Port Merion Peninsula. There's a lovely little secret beach here. Then we're going to go across here to a uh, wonderful viewing point, down to the Boston Lodge, then back across the Cobb. So I hope that will be about uh, 8k or so, and maybe about two to three hours. Okay then, so now we know what we're doing. As I say, it's a beautiful little station this. Um, we're basically going to go out and just take a right to the village. Like I've said, this is my suggestion of things to do. As I say, I just don't feel if you're short of time, really. There's some of the walks just up to the right are really as worth it as what we're going to do if we just take this shortcut. Right, that was only five minutes from up uh, at the station. So, by the way, there's some loos normally open here as well. So, uh, we're just going to carry on into the centre of the village. Right, after ten minutes, we just come to the crossroads here and we're just going to go straight ahead there. Looking out right over the river Dwyford and its estuary, this is Pemrin Duadre Station. And it's just a really nice spot just to be. It's absolutely lovely. Harlick Castle straight ahead. Wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. So we're just going to take a moment here, but then we're going to head straight up the road there. In the background up there, I think are what's known as the Riag Mountains, but hardly anyone goes up there. Look at it. Absolutely brilliant. As I've said, apologies for the road walking, but this will get us to the nice places quicker. I guess like a lot of us who visit this area, um, I've driven past this loads of times, but I've never been in. Okay, so it says it's open till three. Oh, wow. What an oasis of calm. It was gifted to the area in 1858. As I say, I've never been in it. Just feels a real step back in time. Don't worry, I did chip into the uh, collection box. But wow, what a place. It, it really it does feel like you suddenly went back, what was it, 170 years or so? I mean, this is quite busy where we are now. It's a major road. But yeah, if you do get the opportunity, it's open, just step in. It, it really takes you back in time. Okay, out of the church then. We're going to follow the road. As I say, I'm sorry, but you'll understand why. Uh, for about a kilometre and a half. So, as I say, it should be about 15, 20 minutes top. Actually, just thinking about it as well, we are literally trying to walk the length of the line. So, uh, you know, you are going to get the top 30 single rather than the top 10. So, you know, as I say, but stick with me today because there's some beauties ahead. Minvith, that means edge of the road. Right, and here we are, Minvith station check that out for a view just look at it for a station it's absolutely beautiful so you do get off here for port marion come on it was worth that road walk just to see this look at it step back in time again by the way british rail is here too so let me show you what i mean by just going down here right you pop through here and there is Minford Station on the main line. So, beautiful place. You can basically get to Pafeli that way, or Birmingham that way. And uh, if you get the chance, it's the most beautiful ride. So you just come out the right-hand end of the station, and basically we're going to walk for about 200 metres, then take a left and we'll be onto the Port Merion site. Right, so there's a pedestrian crossing here. That was just literally about three, four minutes from uh, the station. And then we just go up here to where there's that large sign and take a right. We're going to follow this road up here for about a kilometre. It's safe, basically. We can walk along a pavement on the side. We're not going to go into Port Marion. I've done videos of that before and we're walking the line today. So uh, let's go. Like I said, we're coming back with some number ones again. <laughs> 
they always did know how to make an impressive entrance, this lot. William Clough Ellis, that was it. He was a chap who built it. Okay, when we come here, we're just going to carry on left down this road. It's not busy. Right, you can walk into Port Marion just down here, but as I say, that's not what we're doing. So, staying safe, staying to the left. We're just going to follow the road down here. We get to this corner, straight down to the bottom here. Right, can't miss this on the corner. Straight ahead, and there's a gate there. I do have to point out that we do have to come straight back this way. There's no other way, but trust me, it's worth it. Just into the corner over here. Just through this gate, just down here. And the driver estuary and your own private beach. How beautiful is this? By the way, no, you can't break into Port Merriam from here either. Blow me neck in there, kingfishes. Oh my gosh. So those two birds just flying around them, flipping, eh? Well, phew, that makes it worth it immediately. Wow. It's got its own stream too. <laughs> Wonderful. Plenty of rock pools as well, teeming with life. So all in all, an absolutely fabulous place to spend an hour or so. Bring your binoculars, bring a picnic, it's wonderful. So, <laughs> farewell. It's been a long time since I've been back here, but even this brief visit has been worth it. Wow, blown away. So, back the way we've come. Okay, so there's just a small car park here. You can hear the train coming back that I was actually on. Uh, <laughs> and we just go left just before the bush and pick up the footpath again. This is Castile Deodorate, by the way, and supposedly you've not lived until you've eaten here. And who am I to query that? <laughs> so it's straight down here for about another 500 metres. Um, it's been two hours and 5.3k, and we're not rushing. We're definitely getting the number ones thick and fast again, aren't we? Absolutely superb. What a wonderful part of the world. Right, so I've just entered the main car park and basically I'm heading for the corner over there because there should be a path up to the viewpoint. So just where the workers' huts are, take a right. It's not particularly well signposted, but we're going up there. Wow, this is a really obscure part. Uh, okay, yeah, but we go up here. Okay, so we just come here and we're just going to take a right. Very casual. More casual than me, actually, about finding this gate. So anyway, we just come to the corner of this field and we go straight through here. Not what you'd call crowded up here, is it? It's beautiful. So we're just going straight ahead about 100 metres, then we're going to take a left for the viewing point. some wildlife today, haven't we? Beautiful, isn't it? Okay, so we just come here and just go up here. Immediately, just follow the telegraph wires, you come up here. After 20 metres or so, just come back on yourself and up here and aim for the highest bit and you found it. <laughs> Brilliant. Here we go, this is 81 metres up. No idea why it's here, but it's the uh, most wonderful place for a great view. And we're off over there, down to Boston Lodge. If I remember as well, we're just carrying on this way, just straight over the back and take a right. Ah, yep. Yeah. Here we are. So, six and a half K and two and a half hours. Absolutely wonderful. So, we're going to take a right down here. Ah, and there are some signs as well. Man, that's a Harry Potter tree if you ever saw one. 
The end is in sight. <laughs> Wonderful. I'll be honest, by the way, if you're just even looking to come for this viewpoint, this is uh, the path leads straight down to Boston Lodge. You can't miss it. But just literally come to this uh, gate. It's quite distinct. And just walk up about 100 metres and it's on your left. So just a tip. You just come here, so straight through the gate ahead. When you get here, just go right. There we go. You can just see the railway through there. And here we go out onto Boston Lodge. So please remember though, we are still walking the railway. <laughs> right, so two hours 50 and 7K, and we're gonna do the last push now to Porth Maddock over the famous Cobb. Right, just cross the road as soon as, and we take a left. Okay, through here. Two options here now. You can either follow the cycleway, stroke walkway down here. And wow, look how beautiful that is. Or as I say, what we're going to do is basically just head across the road and up onto the old seawall where the railway is. Right, please be very careful here, but we're just going to cross the road and go up the steps there. There's the train that we rode to Pemrin on, by the way. And pure food for time. And here's number 143 of the road. Island Railway as well to do, so fabulous timing, complete loop. <laughs> okay, so this is a cob, so it's famously meant to be a mile long, and basically it was built in 1812 to actually control the sea, so to speak. So the land on the right was all reclaimed. So uh, what I'm going to do when I get to the middle, I will do a 360 pan for you. Here we go, it will be a wind-free pan too. Amazing. And so here we are finally back at Harbour Station, Porth Maddock. So that was mountain, forest and sea. So today's walk was 8k and three and a quarter hours. You could probably do it quicker, but would it be as much fun? <laughs> so thank you very much for coming with me on these walks down the Festiniog Railway and I really hope you've enjoyed them.